Hi guys, John Biggs here with TechCrunch. We are here at the epicenter of Raspberry Pi, New York City. I'm sitting here with uh, Lamar Freed, Eben Upton, and Liz Upton, and we are going to look at some of these amazing little circuit boards. I'm really excited about the Raspberry Pi. Why don't you, Eben, since you invented the thing, explain a little bit about what's going on here. I remember mm -hmm. when Raspberry Pis were rare enough that I had a, I had a spreadsheet that told me where they all <laughs> were when three Raspberry Pis was a really, really big deal. I mean, we're a million Pis in, but it's still good to see three Raspberry Pis. We've got a UK manufactured Raspberry Pi uh, Model B. This, this is, is a very the, rare this one. Is, this is like this a Pokemon. Is, this is, yeah, absolutely. You've got to collect them all. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are people who collect them all. Um, I encourage people to collect them all, obviously. <laughs> um, the, um, so this is a UK manufactured Model uh, 512 meg model B. Um, this is what the majority of our shipments at the moment are. Uh -huh. This one over here is a uh, so that's a Chinese manufactured uh, model B attached to uh, a, an Adafruit uh, prototyping kit. Uh, and this, um, one of th yeah, one of this is genuinely a rarity at the moment. This I is think a that's actually the only one in this country. This at the moment, is, isn't it? Okay. So this is this is what we call the model A. This is the twenty five dollar version, and I believe that this is the only one in North America at the moment. We've started selling these in Europe. We're not quite selling them in North America yet, but we hope to start that in the All next right. couple of weeks. And we're very close to a. Uh, fairly large anniversary for you guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, yeah, this is very nearly our first anniversary. We're a year in. We're a million units in. Uh, and, yeah, no sign of any slackening of demand, which is okay. kind of fun. So, Lamar, you guys are selling these things out of this headquarters here, Adafruit in downtown New York, That's right. We're here in, in West Soho, yeah. in the epicenter of fashion, <laughs> food, and, and microelectronic micro manufacturing. manufacturing. That's right. So how does it feel to be essentially be the, the one source for Raspberry Pi? Why was it important for you guys to sell this thing, and uh, how's it selling? Well, um, you know, we sell actually a lot of platforms. We sell you know, Arduinos and embeds and Teensies and all sorts of microcomputers and microcontrollers. Um, we sell like Beagle Bones, Beagle Boards. These are uh, more powerful microcontroller platforms, microcomputer platforms. But when we saw the Raspberry Pi a little bit more than a year ago, I thought like, this is really interesting because um, first off, what's cool is uh, Liz and Evan have a really good cause, which is they're trying to get these computers into every student's hands. And that's actually a little bit different than what most microcomputers or microcontrollers are trying to do. This isn't just about making a dev board to entertain some, you know, director of manufacture or marketing. This is about getting a computer low cost enough that people can get their hands dirty, really tinker with the gadget th itself mm -hmm. without being too scared of, of breaking you know, um, the microcontroller or, or damaging it. Um, you know, an iPad is $800, $400. You wouldn't be so comfortable giving that to your eight-year-old kid if they were going to go at it with a screwdriver. But this, it's totally cool because if it breaks, it's only thirty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. Now that's that is the question. Why do we need a little circuit board uh, for education, as opposed to a really easy-to-use program that you can run on a, in a website or something like that for for teaching how to do resistors and things like that? What's what's the goal here? What was the original goal, and what's what? What is the stated goal, I guess, now that well, you've been a year in? As what we're trying to do here is to make kids creators and not consumers mm -hmm. of electronics. And um, the fact that it doesn't come cased, um, we've actually found a lot of kids really respond very, very well to that. It's you, you, you don't, as a child, see this sort of thing unless you pop open your mobile, mobile phone or break mum's iPad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we just want children to have an opportunity to own something. It's, it, it's small, it can fit in your pocket. And it's so flexible, they can really do anything they want with it. It's, it, it's, it's a tool for creating. We just want to give people access to tools so that they can go on to greater things. <laughs> and are there unusual uh, installations that you've seen? Maybe like computer clusters, or I, I guess the guy who sent his up in space? Yeah, that, that, that's one of the coolest <laughs> ones, I think. Uh, Actually, one of the coolest things that I saw recently was um, this young lady who, for her science project, um, was lighting up a map with LEDs and she used a Raspberry Pi and it was really cool because um, using computers, I mean they're now an application, we have computers in everything. We have computers in our refrigerators, in our toasters. So the idea that kids are becoming more comfortable with thinking, well I have to do a project for like a, a science or biology class, let me use a Raspberry Pi to you know, control or time an uh, experiment, to light up some LEDs, to use it as the tool, not just as something I connect the keyboard to and browse the web. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do with Pi is not to, uh, um, I mean, obviously we've been selling a lot of them to people who already know a lot about computers, people who are naturally that way inclined, but what we're trying to do is uh, broaden the pool of people who might 
uh, become engineers, or the people who might get involved, try and bring in some particularly groups of people who have traditionally been underrepresented in computing. Um, girls would be a great example of that. Um, by finding things that are interesting and meaningful to those people, rather than trying to force those people to come and find you know, a for loop in and of itself interesting. Mm -hmm. And what do you say to folks who maybe are a little bit afraid of this kind of thing? They don't want to give their kids a bunch of wires and, and a, I have a seven-year-old and a three-year-old and I'm, they're going to put it in their mouth or something like that. What's the, uh, what's, what's the bottom line for a parent who's trying to get <laughs> their kids into electronics in this way? Yeah, well, I, think the wonderful, I think the wonderful thing with all of this stuff is that it is, it is extremely safe. It is, it is safe. You can break it. You know probably a, a lot about technology and computing, and this could be a really good platform for you to share that mm -hmm. joy that you have with your kids. So I do see a lot of parents, especially with younger kids who are not maybe ready to wire up their own circuits, they'll do the project together and show them here's how you connect up you know, a monitor, and here's how you connect up an LCD, and here's what all these components are. Rather than just you buy a box and it's like ready to go out of the, you know, out of the container, you just open it and mm -hmm. like it's a laptop. This you actually get to build the computer, the project. So maybe you build a media center together. That's actually something that would really teach a kid a lot about inputs and outputs and how computers work. It almost feels like we've had a lost generation, I suppose, between maybe 98 and just about now that even I haven't had that much experience with circuit boards, especially during the period, and I'm, I'm a fairly techie guy. I mean, I've been doing programming and doing other stuff. Um, what, what did you notice when you, were, when you were working with students who didn't have the experience? What was, what's the value in having experience with this as opposed to having experience in C++? Yeah. Um, I think there's enormous value in having experience in C++. I think, by and large, the problem we were having was that people didn't have experience in anything. You know, mm -hmm. We would have killed for people. <laughs> we were trying to recruit undergraduates. We would have killed for people with experience in C++. I think one of the nice things about this is it gives you a platform to do interesting stuff, which increases the likelihood that you will become a C++ or a Python programmer, or if, you know, if you're a little kid, a Logo programmer or a Scratch programmer. So, okay. um, you know, I think you're absolutely right. There's been a lost generation. Uh, one of the problems we have is that these things are a pipeline, right? You, you're still putting 10-year-old kids in one end of this pipeline. They spend eight years at home learning to program, then they go into a college degree or two, then they come out into industry. Now, if you stop pouring 10-year-olds into that pipeline, uh, people will continue to fall out the other end of the pipeline for a decade. Mm -hmm. And that really is what happened. We stopped filling this pipeline in the late 1990s. And it's only really in the last five, five six years that we've started to see the effects of that. So happy birthday, and thank you very much for sitting down with us. Well, well, thank you. So I, I get to I get to knight you. I get to uh, obviously yes. you're not you're not a Br you're not a British citizen, right? No, not yet. So so this is a uh, this is an honorary knighthood. But okay. Anyway, it's the order of, order of the pie. So, anyway. <laughs> so, so you can I think you can right iron here, that on. Put you know, it right there. So, you, know, we, you know budget cuts in the UK. You know we've gone for iron on uh, knighthoods now. All right. Not, so uh, there's not no the, pins. Not the metal ones. All right. Well, perfect. So thank enjoy you very that. much, Evan. We have all sorts of great starter packs, uh, kits, projects um, in the Adafruit store at adafruit.com. We also have dozens of great pie tutorials from, I just took it out of the box, what do I do? Um, all this is at learn.adafruit.com and just click on the Raspberry Pi topic and uh, just check out all the really awesome stuff you can do with the Raspberry Pi. We're at raspberrypi.org. Thanks a lot guys and thanks for watching. Thank you.